Yeah, thank you for the introduction and uh, good morning or almost afternoon. Thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, I'm going to share with you our work on a serverless orchestration system uh, that I built with my amazing advisor, Amit, and our wonderful collaborators uh, at Microsoft Research, Shadi and Sebastian. Serverless computing is a new paradigm that uses functions and stateful services to build applications in the cloud. Functions are stateless, event-driven, and usually short-lived. Now, serverless provides many benefits compared with traditional cloud computing. Often, it is easier to use, scales better, costs less, and is more efficient. As a result, we've seen increasing serverless adoption, and many view serverless as the next evolution of cloud computing. In this evolution, an important question for the serverless community is how to build large applications that consist of many functions. Unfortunately, building large applications natively on serverless is challenging. Stateful patterns, such as aggregation, are difficult to implement because functions disappear after they complete, and provenance must be tracked to aggregate the correct group of functions. Additionally, fast engines uh, typically guarantee at least once execution, uh, which complicates both end-to-end -end correctness and runtime costs. For a single invocation, uh, we can end up with multiple final outputs, and, and these outputs can also diverge if any one of the functions is non-deterministic. So to address these challenges, many have turned to um, the approach of adding additional services into the serverless infrastructure. And the most common approach uh, is to add an orchestrator service. Orchestrators provide higher level programming interfaces for defining interfunction relations, uh, commonly as director graphs. Users can deploy their own orchestrators in VMs and containers alongside their functions, or use provider hosted orchestrators such as Amazon Step Functions. Now, although it can be internally distributed, logically, an orchestrator works as a centralized controller that initiates all function executions and relays function outputs. Now the centralization simplifies the challenges uh, we discussed before because all functions uh, return their results back to the orchestrator. However, while orchestrators have functional capabilities, the approach comes with several drawbacks. User deployed orchestrators compromise important benefits of serverless computing that people seek in the first place, including freedom from server management and fine-grained usage-based billing. Now, provider-hosted orchestrators can alleviate some of these problems, but they're expensive and restrictive. As an additional hosted multi-tenant service, the orchestrator still requires added resources for performance, scalability, and fault tolerance, as well as teams on call to handle issues and outages. Furthermore, orchestrators limit users' ability to make application-specific changes and optimizations, which can compromise performance and programmability. For example, applications that deal with a certain type of data might want to choose a more suitable data store to relay data between functions instead of having everything go through the orchestrator. Additionally, Applications have to compromise performance by using less efficient patterns when their desired functionalities are not supported by the provider orchestrator. And they can only hope that future updates can fix their issues. This creates a compromise uh, that is familiar to many systems, whether it's networking or operating system, you know, such as waiting for the OS kernel to add certain functionalities when in reality, it is much harder and slower for a kernel to evolve than the applications themselves. In this work, we try to look at the problem from a different angle. Instead of adding new services into the infrastructure, we ask if this problem can be solved on the application level without any changes to the existing infrastructure. Uh, I think examining this question is interesting both from a research perspective and from a practical perspective. Now, from a research perspective, it examines how far we can take the serverless abstraction as is before adding or modifying something becomes necessary. 
From a practical perspective, an application level solution uh, would offer several advantages. Now first, because the solution is built on the basic serverless as is, it automatically enjoys the benefits such as no server management, fast scaling, and fine-grained billing. Moreover, uh, the performance and costs of an application level solution can automatically improve when the underlying systems become better. Like for, for instance, like when Lambda gets uh, even faster or cheaper, an application level orchestrator gets faster and cheaper too, just automatically. For providers, it frees them from the need to offer and host an additional service. For users, an application level solution empowers them with uh, flexibility and programmability. It also helps, it also helps prevent uh, vendor lock-ins and allows applications to choose the data store they want or the fast engines they want and even migrate entirely across platforms. So to this purpose, uh, we designed an application level orchestration system which we call Unum. Unum is built on the basic serverless abstraction, requiring no new services or changes to existing APIs. Compared with Step Functions, a state-of-the-art orchestrator on AWS, Unum supports the same higher level programming interface, ensures exactly one's execution semantics, supports stateful patterns, but at the same time is more programmable, cheaper to use, and performs better in most scenarios. Unum applications are easily portable. Uh, we implemented Unum on both Google Cloud and AWS. Applications can migrate from one to another without any code changes. Now to um, optimize orchestration on the application level, Unum's design needed to consider many questions. Now for the sake of time, uh, I'll focus on the following key questions in this talk. Where to execute orchestration logic? How to support stateful patterns such as aggregation? And how to ensure strong execution guarantees? Now there are many other interesting uh, questions such as how to support dynamic patterns, uh, naming and um, uh, garbage collection uh, that I encourage you to check out in our paper. Now first, an important advantage of orchestrators is their higher uh, level programming interfaces. We want to preserve this advantage. But without an orchestrator, where do we execute uh, the orchestration logics? Uh, now we could use uh, a fast function to serve as basically the equivalent to an orchestrator, but this approach is inefficient. And function timeout limits overall application size that you can achieve. So instead, Unum decentralizes the orchestration logic where each function executes only the portion local to itself. And Unum does this at compile time by transforming applications into an intermediate representation. So, so practically, what this looks like is, given the application written in step functions, Unum extracts a graph representation where nodes are functions and edges are transitions between functions. And to decentralize this uh, logic, Unum assigns edges to their tail nodes. And in practice, each uh, edge involves uh, invoking the head node function and then passing the tail function's output and maybe some other functions output as well to the head function. So the Unum IR encodes these actions uh, such that each function basically end up uh, having a sequence of instructions specifying what orchestration actions to perform after user code completes. So for example, here we use invoke B instruction to encode that A should invoke B and pass A's output to B. And here is basically the same thing, but for two outgoing edges. And then at runtime, uh, the Unum library wraps around user code and execu executes the IR instructions transparently. So you don't need to change your user code at all. Now, an important benefit I want to note of this application level approach is that developers can control how simple or complex the IR needs to be. You can add instructions, or, you know, tailor them for specific use cases. In our, in our implementation, we built a standard library uh, that consists of instructions to support all patterns in uh, step functions in order to show uh, that we can achieve the same level of functional capability as a centralized production orchestrator. Next, we'll look at how Unum executes stateful patterns and we'll use the example of aggregation where one head node is triggered when all tails complete uh, and the head node uh, receives the output of all tail nodes. 
So the high level idea is that each tail would write its result into the data store upon user code completion and then check whether other tails have completed. Uh, if everyone has completed, uh, then the function invokes the head node. Now, uh, this design empowers any one of the tail functions to invoke the head node functions. None of the functions would sit around and wait for each other. So it also allows functions uh, to stay short-lived. Now, in practice, we encode it uh, using a fan in our instruction that specifies the head node and all tail nodes. I won't go into much details here. It's, it's just a language specification. Uh, now, I want to note that this design does require strong consistency from the data store uh, to avoid the scenario, for example, here, where both B and C are completed, but neither sees the other's output and, and thus never invokes D. Moreover, while this design works, it, it requires a large number of reads. You know, if there are n tail nodes, each node uh, needs to, to do n minus one reads. So to optimize this, uh, Unum uses a set data structure for coordination. The idea is that when a tail node completes, it will additionally add its name to a set to signal its completion. Each tail node would then immediately read the coordination set and check if all tails are ready. And, and thus, each tail node now only needs to perform one read instead of n minus one reads. Next, I'll talk about how Unum solves the challenges of exactly one's execution guarantee. So to provide end-to-end -end exactly one's semantics, Unum again leverages data stores and uses a checkpointing mechanism. The idea is that uh, the Unum runtime checkpoints exactly one execution of a node. The checkpoint uh, contains the user code results uh, and it uniquely identifies its node through, through the naming of the uh, checkpointed data. Now, if there is a concurrent execution that produces a result after a checkpoint is already created, uh, that concurrent execution's result is simply discarded. Furthermore, Unum makes sure that only the data written into a checkpoint is propagated downstream. So if a function crashes before invoking its head node, it gets retried, and this retry execution will first read from the existing checkpoint and use the checkpointed data as its final output. Now, in fact, as an added optimization, the standard library will bypass the user code entirely if a checkpoint already exists. We've implemented uh, Unum on both AWS and Google Cloud. It includes a standard runtime library and a set of two chains, including a front-end compiler that turns step functions into Unum IR. The runtime library for AWS uh, is built on Lambda and DynamoDB, and the runtime library for Google Cloud uses Google Cloud Functions and Firebase. Now, I, wanna, I think it's important to note that developers can add support to other fast, fun, uh, fast engines and data stores if they want to. Uh, all they need to do is to basically add a wrapper runtime library for their targeted uh, uh, data store or fast engine. There's no need to change their applications or the IR. Now to evaluate, we compare Unum against uh, state-of-the-art orchestrator uh, step functions on AWS. So for apple-to-apple -apple comparison, all applications are written as step functions with the exact same user code and all lambdas are configured to be the same. First, we measure the latency to uh, make a single transition from a function to another. This is the most fundamental um, transition as other patterns are basically made up uh, of this transition. Now this graph shows the latency of this transition for different data sizes. We see that Unum is consistently faster than step functions for all data sizes. Uh, this shows that Unum's application level approach can at least provide comparable or, or maybe even better performance. Moreover, the majority, if you look at the breakdown, the majority of Unum's latency comes from the underlying services. That is uh, the storage write, uh, storage read, and Lambda invoke. So this is to say as the underlying services improve, the majority of Unum's latency will improve automatically. Next, we look at the parallel performance in a fan out and fan in. This figure shows the end-to-end -end latency for invoking and then aggregating two to uh, 512 parallel branches. 
Okay? At a low branching degree, Unum does incur a modest overhead, up to 200 milliseconds, relative to step functions. Uh, we believe this is mostly due to our implementation initiating each branch sequentially. However, as the number of parallel branches increases, Unum starts to outperform step functions, resulting in over 4x lower latency at 512 branches. And now the reason is that starting at around 20 branches, step functions uh, actually begins to throttle branch creation. Um, step function doesn't explain why, and we don't have access to their you know, source code, so we can't say for sure. Uh, but a possible reason is that as a service, step function has to limit how much I.O. resources is allocated to each application. And right now, this limit seems to be around 20, and increasing this limit uh, will most likely require a bigger cluster. Unum, on, on the other hand, uh, can scale as much as Lambda permits, uh, which is currently about 1,000 concurrent functions. Next, uh, we compare end-to-end -end latency and total costs uh, of running applications, uh, running real applications. And we use four applications that represent a variety of patterns and usages. We can see that Unum is consistently faster and cheaper than step functions for these applications, up to 2x faster and 9x cheaper. Now, more interestingly, when we break down the cost, we see that the majority of costs of running applications using step functions is actually the cost of step functions itself. And the majority of cost of running applications using Unum are cost to the data store, uh, in, in this case, DynamoDB. This means that a cheaper data store, uh, such as Cosmos DB, uh, which at the time I remember was, I think was 4x cheaper, uh, will significantly reduce Unum's cost. This also means that similar to performance, when the efficiency and uh, therefore potentially the pricing of the underlying uh, systems improve, an application level orchestrator like Unum automatically benefits without any code changes. In conclusion, we believe Unum demonstrates that application level orchestration is both possible and practical. Compared with a state-of-the-art production orchestrator, application level orchestration provides the same level of execution guarantees and is more flexible, cheaper, and often faster. With that, thank you, and I welcome your questions. Thanks, Peter.